Do you eat dogs? Are you related to Kim Jong Il? Ew. Why are you eating that? That looks so disgusting. Fast forward to present day, it's 2023. Their kimbap was sold out nationally. I felt connected to my Korean roots. My name is Sarah Sujin Ahn. I am the daughter of Korean immigrants who moved to America in the 1990s. Despite growing up in Southern California my entire life, I grew up with parents who are as Korean as they can get. They speak only Korean and have many typical Korean traits. For example, I slept with my fan on on a hot summer night. As I dozed off into my slumber, it was soon after I heard my dad's footsteps approaching my room. He turned off the fan and left the room silently. Confused but tired, I went back to sleep and sweated throughout the entire night as a result of this. I never asked my dad why he did this, but <laughs> I sooner or later learned that in Korean culture, sleeping with a fan on kills you. <laughs> We celebrate every birthday with myeokguk, often heard nahuna playing in the back, and watch tongmul nongchang every Sunday night. <laughs> Nothing was ever questioned. I never asked who nahuna was why we ate myeokguk on our birthdays, or why we couldn't sleep with a fan on. This was simply our world, rooted in Korean culture, and it was in my Korean DNA to understand this without asking. In contrast, outside of my Korean home, it felt like a different world. Keep in mind, this was in the early 2000s, long before you saw much diversity in American pop culture and media. I remember back when I was maybe in fifth grade, about 10 to 11 years old, and my friends and I tried to match ourselves to which celebrity we look like the most. We sat in a circle together, observed each face one by one. My friends got multiple answers as they were matched, from, as they were matched to celebrities from hit movies we watched at that time. This included them being matched to Anne Hathaway from The Devil Wears Prada, Emma Watson, from Harry Potter, and Rachel McAdams from Mean Girls. When it was my turn for evaluation, my friends looked absolutely stumped. They couldn't name any Asian celebrity. After much thought, they went, aha, we know who you look like. You look like Brenda Song. While I was flattered by this match, that was most likely the only known Asian celebrity for us at that time. Brenda Song, a Hmong American actress from, who starred in the show The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. As you may have all guessed, I was often the only Asian in the class growing up, and I became used to the typical jokes for being Korean. Do you eat dogs? Why do your eyes look like that? Are you related to Kim Jong Il, who, <laughs> who was the president of North Korea at that time? There was even a time when a classmate of mine showed me Dongbang Shingi's Balloons music video and mocked them for looking ridiculous, dancing in animal costumes. Now, I was a big fan of Dongbang Shingi, and when my friend made fun of them, I quickly made up an excuse that this music video was filmed for charity in hopes it would stop my friend from further making fun of them and of our culture. Despite getting used to hearing these jokes, I had a hard time understanding them because this wasn't the world I grew up in at home. So I would go home and Google these jokes. And I won't lie, it stung. It stung a bit, or maybe a lot, <laughs> when I understood the full context of these jokes. And sometimes I would pretend to be sick so that I could skip school the next day and avoid these kids. Despite these instances where I felt like my culture criticized by those outside of it, it never stopped me from listening to Tombang Shingi or teaching my class how to say Annyeong Hazeo. There was something so special about our heritage that I felt so proud of, and I always wanted to share that with my friends at school. 
Remember how I said my parents are as Korean as they can get? They're so Korean, especially my dad, who only eats traditional Korean foods. We didn't grow up making American foods. I've never seen my mom bake cookies. In fact, our oven is used for storage to contain all her pots and pans. We grew up regularly eating chuk, grilled mackerel, japchae, kimchi jjigae, sangeopsal, and all the typical foods Korean moms make. Now, my mom is actually a very good cook. So much so, she opened up a restaurant in the United States, and that became our source of our income for a good decade. I've always taken pride in the food she makes because the amount of work and love that goes into Korean food is insurmountable. For example, foods like japchae and kimbap require us to give attention to each and every ingredient from having to season and cook the eggs separately and sauteing each vegetable, then, pa then pairing it with kim or noodles. This labor of love was always evident to me growing up, and when I was in sixth grade, I wanted to bring my mom's kimbap to school for lunch and share it with my classmates. Uh, after all, for us Koreans, sharing and eating food with our friends and family is a huge part of our culture, as it's a way for us to connect with others and build relationships. Plus, my mom's kimbap is very good. <laughs> Without question, my mom woke up bright and early to make this labor-intensive food, and packed enough for myself and my select classmates. And I went to school proudly gripping the handle of my lunch pail to ensure that it wouldn't get lost. I remember I was constantly looking at the clock, waiting for the bell to ring at 11.45, which was when we ate lunch. I ran and grabbed my purple lunch pail and quickly went to the lunch tables, eager to show off the kimbap to my classmates. I remember staring at the container and holding the kimbap as if it was a rare once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for my classmates to witness. I opened the container and proudly looked at the pieces my mom had cut for me and all the different colors and vegetables she had seasoned and layered so meticulously. I also brought chopsticks for this event as I wanted everyone to have the full experience of eating Korean food. I picked up a piece smiling ear to ear, when suddenly a classmate exclaimed, Ew, why are you eating that? That looks so disgusting. The entire lunch table became silent. I looked at the kimbap, and then I looked up and saw that everyone was looking at the kimbap and then me, silently agreeing with, the, with what that person had said. Stubborn, I ate the kimbap in silence, but with shame. I went home gripping the same purple lunch pail, but in pain and anger this time. The Sarah, who once took great pride in her Korean culture, finally felt defeated and isolated. When I came home, my mom asked me how the kimbap was. I told her it was good and that all my classmates liked it. I lied because I didn't want to hurt her feelings, but because I felt embarrassed, confused, and ashamed. Ashamed that I had brought this food to school, embarrassed by how disgusting Korean food was to others, and confused about my own identity. Later that night, I told my mom, Oma, please don't pack me kimbap again. Can you please pack me a sandwich instead? From 2007 to 2017, for nearly 10 years, my interest in sharing Korean culture became dormant. I was certainly not ashamed of my Korean culture, but I had subconsciously come to terms with the idea that maybe Korean culture is not mainstream enough to be accepted in America. Perhaps Americans just like American things. But little did I know that slowly and surely, a wave was building up behind me. A wave now known as the Korean wave, which was about to take America by storm. Korean culture, particularly K-pop, 
was creeping into American pop culture and growing more mainstream exponentially. In 2012, Gangnam Style by Psy was released and became the first music video to reach 1 billion views on YouTube. To understand this in its full context, we must understand that this is a Korean star from Korea speaking Korean and outnumbering the biggest American pop stars in viewership on one of the most popular media platforms. This was huge and extremely monumental. And it was as if this was a foreshadowing moment for what was to come in the next few years. I was in middle school, and I remember students around me being absolutely obsessed with this song and its dance. Everywhere I went, I heard and students go, hey, sexy lady, op, 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 bang Gangnam style. And I smirked every time knowing and feeling proud that this trend was originating from Korea. Five years later, BTS performed DNA at the 2017 American Music Awards. I distinctly remember my dad watching the news coverage of the event on KBS, and I paused. I paused for a minute in front of the TV screen, and I said, "Ah." Oh, BTS performed in America. Wow. But this time, there was no humor behind this performance that Gangnam Style once famously held, but rather high praise that was continuously noted and seen by other influential American celebrities. The same year, I had the opportunity to visit Korea as an adult. My Samchun had taken me to watch Shim Chong Chon at Korea House. Not knowing what to expect, I left the theater in a flood of my own tears. I think I was maybe the only person who had cried this much. And I remember I told my Samchun that I my eyes were reacting this way due to the allergies caused by the dust. It was for the first time ever that I felt so unexplainably connected to my Korean roots the sounds of the drum beats hitting the changu, the strings of the kaiyubun vibrating across the room, and the story of Shim Chong's desire of wanting to sacrifice herself for her father all felt home to me. It was the defining moment when I fully felt the expression of my pride as a Korean, and I decided that I would never let anyone make me feel ashamed of my Korean culture again. A year later, I graduated from college with a degree in public health. After going through what is termed as the quarter-life crisis, I felt lost with my new full-time job and the repetitiveness of a nine-to-five, which I think we can all relate to, right? The emptiness and confusion that surrounds us around 22 to 23 years old, where we all question, what the heck am I doing with my life? And what is the meaning behind all of this? To get through this crisis, I developed a meaningful hobby and created my blog, Honest Kitchen, named after my family name, On, and my personality, which is often described as honest and blunt. I created this blog to share my passion for my mother's Korean recipes and to preserve them in a medium that would withstand the test of time. As the Korean wave continued to grow, my blog grew in conjunction. Fast forward to present day, it's 2023, and with the help of my mom, I now have a social media following of almost half a million people around the world on Instagram, and over 300,000 on TikTok, where I proudly share my mom's Korean recipes. In addition to sharing my mother's cooking and recipes, I also provide thought-provoking insights about life and culture from the perspective of a Korean-American family. Some topics I discuss on Honest Kitchen include the reasons why I still live at home in my late 20s, which is uncommon in American culture, why Asian parents of my parents' generation don't say I love you, and I also show the candid life of my family, where we live a very realistic, hardworking life while supporting each other. 
So my content is emotionally heavy, as you may have assumed. So I also upload the fun and light moments of my family with my followers. This past summer, in August, I went to go buy groceries at my local Trader Joe's, which is a popular American grocery store known for carrying basic to unique items. Out of the blue, I spotted kimbap, frozen kimbap, being sold. I held it in my hand, dumbfounded by the fact that it was frozen, and I put it back and went on about my day. I drove home feeling inextricably confused about this new product. The same product I was once bullied for is now being sold in a popular American grocery store. Let alone, this wasn't a Korean fusion food that was being sold here, such as Korean corn dogs, which had its moment a few years back. This was a traditional Korean food that I had grown up with, now being sold frozen at a mainstream American grocery store. There were so many thoughts going through my mind. I canceled all my plans that weekend and went immediately back to Trader Joe's. I bought two kimbap rolls, priced at $3.99 each, and the cashier who rang me up also happened to be Korean and was also amazed by how it was being sold frozen and that the instructions said to heat the kimbap roll. I was extremely skeptical, to say the least, but felt excited to show my mom. I went home, took my phone out, and clicked record to film my mom's reaction. I walked towards her, um, who was gar- who sh- I walked towards my mom, who was gardening at that time, and I showed her the kimbap and told her it was being sold frozen at Trader Joe's, and that it was a product from Korea. She didn't know I was recording her, and her reaction was priceless. <laughs> she was shocked, confused, and curiously excited, and all these emotions were portrayed in her reaction. We filmed ourselves tasting the kimbap, in which we repeatedly said, it's not bad, and gladly finished the kimbap with surprising satisfaction. At the end of the video, we recommend the product with a rating of 7.8 out of 10. The next day, Trader Joe's reported that their kimbap was sold out nationally. Customers were told that the kimbap wouldn't be back in stock for another three months in either October or November. This video of my mom and I reacting to kimbap had reached nearly 13 million views, and as a result, kimbap sales began to soar everywhere, everywhere else in America. Granted, we weren't the only content creators to film, ourself, to film ourselves taste testing the kimbap at Trader Joe's, but I believe that featuring my Korean mom in that video really helped kick off the virality of the kimbap trend. Witnessing the growing popularity of this traditional Korean food across the United States filled me with immense pride and joy. My Korean heritage is a source of deep pride for me, and I am truly honored to use my social media platforms, including TikTok, to showcase the richness and beauty of Korean culture. Through many forms of media, Koreans have made significant strides in establishing a global presence. And I am driven by the ambition to perpetuate this progress through my online presence. If you were to ask the same girl who was once bullied for bringing kimbap to school for nearly nearly 10 years ago, that she would one day be a part of selling out kimbap throughout America, she would not believe you. I credit much of my social media success to two things. First is the proliferation of social media platforms like Instagram and TikTok. These platforms have shined the spotlight of Korean pop culture, which was once a niche, bringing it into the mainstream. Second is Korean entertainment, which has been growing domestically for over 20 years and now has broken international barriers to reach global reach. We have seen this globalization of Korean culture, specifically in K-pop, K-drama, and Korean movies. We now have movies like Parasite, with a full Korean cast winning Best Picture at the Oscars, and shows like Squid Games ranking number one on Netflix in America. In many parts of the world today, even in the United States, racism and xenophobia continue to cause conflict and misunderstanding. I believe that the negative thoughts and feelings people have towards other races 
or cultures are a result of them having no exposure to the lives of people from those other cultures. Through the sharing of Korean culture in social media, which is proliferating and growing now more than ever, Korean culture is accessible in every home and on every phone with an internet connection. Through this medium, people are able to see the truth in our similarities while exploring and celebrating our differences. This creates a community online that is not only tolerant of, but also accepting and participatory in different cultures, such as our own Korean culture. And this translates to life outside of social media as well. Korean popular culture has swept the world. And I do not believe that this is a wave that will come and go. I believe that Korean culture is here to stay and will continue to be a part of enriching American culture for generations to come. Today, my Korean friends who have kids tell me that their kids happily take him up to school and come home asking their parents, what Korean food can we pack next? Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.